Best Practices in Domestic Service Robot Design Abstract before service robots will be part of our daily lives, large-scale developments on both hardware and software are required. Nevertheless, service robots are currently only available to large research institutions that have the resources to develop one. The service robots that are available are usually far too expensive. Furthermore, the available service robots are not modular, and their designs are closed source, hampering further development. Therefore, a modular service robot is required with standardized interfaces. Furthermore, it must be open hardware so that it can act as a reference implementation for future developments. Keyword service robots, mobile robots, algorithm classes, domestic robots, open source hardware. I introduction. Robots are expected to play an increasing role in society over the next number of years. They can, e.g., reduce the pressure on the home care system by assisting people with mobility impairments so that they can live independently at home for a longer time. Furthermore, Robots will also increasingly work alongside people in industry. This illustrates the need for the development of versatile, reliable, robust, and affordable robots. As is mentioned in Weishart ETL, 2010, it is expensive and time-consuming to develop these robots. Nevertheless, many service robots have been developed over the past 10 years. The development of the PR2, based on the design in Weirbeck ETL, 2008, has concentrated on the design and implementation of a fully integrated development platform that is designed to be safe and capable in human environments. The long-term goal of the CareOBot project, Graph ETL, 2004-2009, is to develop a mobile robot able to assist people in their homes and combines the technological aspects with a user-friendly design. The two-arm system in reference ODT ETL, 2006, is developed as a research platform to contribute to the manipulation skills of humanoid robots. Together with the platform introduced in Fuchs ETL, 2009, it also forms the mobile service robot Roland Justin. More humanoid research platforms are Armar 3, AS4 ETL, 2006, Dynamade, Stuckler and Benk, 2009, 21, Iwata and Shugano, 2009, and Holly, Herman ETL, 2013. Two modularity similar to the computer industry, which quickly gained momentum after a standardized, Open PC architecture was introduced, the development of service robots can greatly benefit from standardized interfaces that allow modular substitution of components. Modular components with standardized interfaces I, allow the use of hardware components for a specific task, 2, allow a robot to be assembled from components of multiple developers and 3, eases maintenance of the robots. Modularity has been an important issue in a number of these designs. In Weirbeck ETL, 2008, it is recognized that a modular approach makes it possible to add specialized hardware and end effectors. The CareOBot 3 also has a modular setup, Weishart ETL, 2010, and has a modified, existing manipulator connected to an existing end effector. Roland Justin, ODT ETL, 2006, Fuchs ETL, 2009, also has a separately designed base, torso, and arms. Similarly, Armar 3, AS4 ETL, 2006, and Holly, Herman ETL, 2013, have been designed as a mobile platform with a modular upper body. However, only the PR2 contains open interfaces to use different grippers, arms, or sensors and the designs in Stuckler and Benk, 2009, Iwata and Shugano, 2009, are in general less modular. Three open source software as is argued in Reynolds and Wyatt, 2011, Open source software implementations of a standard means that the standard is more likely to be of high quality, since these implementations act as reference implementations, and that the standard is more likely to be adopted. Unfortunately, most of these robots are unique research platforms that are not available to other research institutions, Fuchs ETL, 2009, Weishart ETL, 2010. The platforms that are available such as the PR2, Weirbeck ETL, 2008, and the CareOBot 3, Graph ETL, 2009, are too expensive for many research institutions. In the field of humanoid, walking robots, the importance of open hardware has long been recognized, with the iCub, Meta ETL, 2008, Darwin OP, Ha ETL, 2011, and Nimbro OP, Swartz ETL, 2014, as well-known examples. These robots, however, are not suitable as service robots. In the next section, 
the design principles of the base platforms, upper bodies, and manipulators of current domestic service robots are discussed. In this section, various possibilities for base platforms, torsos, and manipulators are discussed. For base platforms most of the robots consist of a moving base, a torso with one or more degrees of freedom and one or two manipulators. Although many of the tasks that are currently demonstrated using service robots can be performed with only one manipulator, an anthropomorphic robot with two manipulators and a moving torso has the advantage that it can also perform by manual manipulation. Therefore, focus will lie on these anthropomorphic robots. Base platforms for service robots can be divided in three categories, non-holonomic, semi-holonomic, and fully holonomic platforms. A holonomic robot can drive in any direction without having to turn beforehand. Hence, both the number of controllable DUFS and the total number of DUFS equal 3, 2 translations and 1 rotation. A non-holonomic robot has fewer controllable DUFS than the total number of DUFS. For example, a car is non-holonomic, it cannot drive sideways. A semi-holonomic platform is able to drive sideways. However, it first has to turn its wheels. Non-holonomic robots have two differentially driven wheels and one or two passive caster wheels, e.g., the Pioneer P3DX, or four or more differentially driven wheels, e.g., the Pioneer p 3 it As is recognized, however, in AS4 ETL, 2006, Fuchs ETL, 2009, ST Uckler and Benk, 2009, this is not very beneficial for manipulation and maneuvering in tight spaces. The semi-omnidirectionality of the robots in Weirbeck ETL, 2008, Fuchs ETL, 2009, Stuckler and Benk, 2009, is obtained using steering wheels, i.e., four individually driven steerable drives. Each drive has either one or two wheels, hence the total number of motors required for a platform is either 8 or 12. This large number of actuators is the main drawback of these platforms. Therefore, a base using either mechanum wheels or omni wheels is an interesting alternative. These wheels have small rolls on their circumference, allowing the wheels to move freely in axial direction, in case of omni wheels, or under an angle, in case of mechanum wheels. In Weirbeck ETL, 2008, it was argued that these fully holonomic platforms did not perform sufficiently robust in the presence of doorway thresholds, curbs and extension cords. Nevertheless, fully holonomic platforms are also successfully used in Iwata and Shugano, 2009, and Herman ETL, 2013. As is mentioned in Fuchs ETL, 2009, Platforms with more than three wheels are statically overdetermined and hence require some form of suspension in order to maintain good ground contact. Wheel suspension is not specifically addressed in Iwata and Shugano, 2009, Stuckler and Benk, 2009, Herman ETL, 2013. Roland Justin, Fuchs ETL, 2009, has an independent wheel suspension system. An example of adding compliance using a rotational degree of freedom between the front and rear axis can be found in, e.g., Bischoff ETL, 2011. The upper body is the successor of the design in Weirbeck ETL, 2008, and the robot in Stuckler and Benk, 2009, are equipped with telescopic spines. This results in a large vertical motion while keeping the center of gravity, cog, in the middle of the robot. On the other hand, the robots in S4 ETL, 2006, ODT ETL, 2006, Iwata and Shugano, 2009, Herman ETL, 2013, have rotational DUFS. The upper bodies in S4 ETL, 2006, Iwata and Shugano, 2009, Herman ETL, 2013, each have one actuator per joint, whereas one of the DUFS in ODT ETL, 2006, is passive, i.e., the tilt of the chest is coupled to the base via tendons. The main advantage of having a pitch joint is that the robot can move its shoulders further forward, as is indicated in ODT ETL, 2006. In our experiences with Amigo, the absence of a pitch joint is indeed a drawback, the robot needs to be positioned very accurately with respect to an object to allow a feasible grasping motion. For large tilt motions, however, care has to be taken to prevent the robot from tipping over. In Fuchs ETL, 2009, this is solved by using a variable footprint, increasing the required number of actuators and the complexity and therewith the costs of the system. An alternative approach is presented in Herman ETL, 2013, where a stability measure is optimized in motion planning. However, 
the safety of the robot preferably does not depend on software. 6. Manipulators One of the key abilities of a service robot is the ability to transport objects. Here too, the robots are all equipped with manipulators. These manipulators typically have up to 7 degrees of freedom and most manipulators are either mechanically compliant or have torque sensors so that the controllers enable compliant control. The robots in ODT ETL, 2006, Weishart ETL, 2010, have industrial robot arms with 7 DUFS and harmonic drives. The arms in ODT ETL, 2006, are equipped with torque sensors to allow compliant control. Both arms, however, are too large and too heavy for a dual-arm domestic robot. The robot in Herman ETL, 2013, has arms with 6 DUFS using 3 shunk power balls, lacking the possibility to do compliant control. The arms of the robot in Stuckler and Benk, 2009, are actuated by Dynamixel servo actuators. Although these have a compliant mode in which they are back-drivable, true impedance control is not possible. The robots in Weirbeck ETL, 2008, and Iwata and Shugano, 2009, also have 7 DUFS but are mechanically compliant. Although recent developments show that variable stiffness actuation is a promising research direction, it is concluded that a rigid arm with torque sensors leads to a simpler design of both hardware and controllers. To keep the compact design and anthropomorphic appearance, a design with differential joints similar to, e.g., LETN ETL, 2007, RIS ETL, 2010, is desired. Compared to the current manipulators, a number of possible improvements is identified, i, reduce the backlash in the differential joints, 2, improve the absolute position sensors and 3, redesign the I.O. to be compatible with the rest of the robot. 7 Mechanical Platform Base To design a domestic service robot the following requirements need to be fulfilled. To minimize the number of required actuators for an omnidirectional platform, the base is fully holonomic, i.e., it has either omni wheels or mechanum wheels. With respect to costs, it is furthermore desired to i, use so the shelf parts whenever possible and to design parts in such a way that production costs decrease with increasing production volumes. Since the robot is supposed to operate in domestic and care environments, it must be able to match human walking velocities up to V equals 2.0 M slash S equals 7.2 km per hour. To come to a timely stop in case of unexpected events, the robot must be able to accelerate to this velocity in 0.5 S, hence A equals 4.0 M slash S2. 2. Compute the required motor torques, the weight budget in Table 1 has been used. The width of the robot is limited to 600 mm to easily fit through doors. The robot must be able to drive through wheelchair accessible areas. This implies that a vertical edge may up to 6 mm and a beveled edge with a slope up to 1, 2 with a height up to 13 mm are allowed. To keep traction even at rigid, uneven surfaces, the wheels must be compliantly suspended. Table 1, Estimated Mass of the Various Body Parts 8. Mechanics The difference between Omni wheels and Mechanum wheels is The angle on which the rollers are placed on the wheel. Compared to Omni wheels, Mechanum wheels have a number of advantages. With the same total width and wheel size, a Mechanum wheel platform has a wider track and a longer wheelbase, 0.55 m, compared to an Omni wheel platform, 0.46 m, resulting in a more stable platform, see Figure 1. Figure 1, schematic layout of an Omni wheel and a Mechanum wheel platform. As is indicated by the red dashed lines, the Mechanum Wheel platform is more stable and has more space available for peripheral equipment compared to the Omni Wheel platform. Together with a more favorable position of the motors this also results in more space for peripheral equipment. Finally, driving over doorway thresholds is smoother because the wheels roll along their circumference instead of the circumference of the small rollers. Although some of the robots are equipped with a spring damper system to handle uneven floors, no specific attention has been paid to the resulting driving characteristics. Nevertheless, as is well known in the automotive industry, suspension design has a great influence on, e.g., the camber and caster angles over the wheel travel, the roll center height and dive and squat properties. Therefore, various suspension concepts have been considered, with one or both axles mounted to the chassis with a rotational duf, crossed bars, and an independent suspension. Of these concepts, the independent multi-link suspension was selected. The main advantage of this concept is that the wheels will always be perpendicular to the surface, i.e., when the robot is accelerating in any direction as well as when driving over obstacles, see Figure 2. This prevents vibrations that are otherwise introduced. 
A second advantage is that the center of the base platform is not occupied by suspension parts. The suspension geometry has been optimized using extensive dynamic simulations of the robot accelerating and driving over doorsteps of 15 mm. During the doorstep simulations, both compression and rebound of the wheels reached 20 mm but the camber angles remained below 0.3 degrees. During normal use, i.e., driving over a smooth floor with a maximum acceleration of 2.5 m/s2, wheel compression and rebound are around 5 mm and as a result the camber angle stays below 0.1 degree. Figure 2, rear view of the base, the multi-link suspension is designed to keep the wheels perpendicular to the ground in all three situations. 11 Conclusion A lot of knowledge about the service robots is already available. The main problem is that it is concentrated in research institutions and not shared as open source hardware. That leads to slower development and optimization and higher cost. The goal in service robots for domestic use should be open source development.